there, Mary Graham, alias Grilling Grandma, with Cowboy Charcoal. And today, we have a hot and spicy meatloaf for you. It's gonna be so delicious. I'm so excited about getting ready with this. Watch along. The first step I'm gonna do is to go ahead and fill up the smoker box. Now, we're gonna take about a pound of hickory chips. I absolutely love the flavor of these chips, especially with ground chuck. And so I'll fill this up. Now I'll go ahead and put this on the hottest part of the grill. We want it to go ahead and heat up, lid off, over direct heat right now. Then we're gonna turn it down for indirect heat once we start up the meatloaf. Goodbye. Smoke away. You'll want two pounds of ground chuck. Today we have Hassel Cattle Company's chuck. It's going to be so good. I'm going to chop up the meat first. Now, there's a little trick, lots of tricks. Believe me, I learned them all as a competitive cook. We're going to flavor every single layer of the meatloaf. That's why it might be a little different than the meatloaf you had as a child. We're gonna have two teaspoons of salt and a teaspoon of garlic powder. That's because actually the day I made it for the first time, I was too lazy to chop the garlic. Sometimes, you know, a busy grilling grandma just has too many things to do. Now you can get all your aggressions out. Don't have to go to the gym when you make meatloaf. Give it a little toss just so that the salt and garlic powder gets all mixed in. Now, there's another trick to grilling grandma's meatloaf. We're gonna add chopped bacon. So what I'm gonna do is use these kitchen chairs to cut right through. I can go ahead and cut, cut, cut. Now, yes, 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 you can go ahead and use your knife. I just happen to think I do a better job cutting with scissors or shears. The other trick to cutting bacon, of course, you probably already discovered this, do it chilled. Chilled bacon cuts so much easier than bacon that's been sitting out. So you might go ahead and chill your bacon before cutting. My grandkids call this beasting it. I'll just chop it up like a wild grandma. Okay, now you just get to dump that on top. Now I have ground chuck and bacon chopped up, and now we get to add some other ingredients to really do the flavor boots that I've been talking about. So I'm gonna add red onion. As you notice, do you think I really chop these onions? No, I put them in the food processor. And if you only had a white onion, you'd use a white onion. Now I have some yellow bell pepper. And I'm gonna put that in. What, if you notice, when you allow bell pepper to sit for a little bit, it gets juicy. So watch. See how much juice I have out of there? I don't want all that juice in here, but I want the flavor of the yellow pepper in there. Well, you might say, girl and grandma, I don't have a yellow pepper. I have a bell pepper, a green bell pepper in my refrigerator. I'd say, go ahead and use it. Cause green bell pepper and Meatloaf go really well together. Now I have Anaheim pepper. Once again, it happened to be in my fridge that day. I'm gonna mix it well. Why you don't throw all these ingredients into the food processor and mix them that way, or maybe stir them up, is that you wanna try to keep them light. And I'll tell you, my meatloaf is so light and delicious. I'm not mushing it too, Together too much. See, I'm keeping it aerated still. I'm mixing all the ingredients nice and evenly. So we're going to go ahead and check on the smoking chips right now. Perfect. It looks great. Now we're almost ready to go. So what do we do? We are going to go ahead and go for indirect heating. Now this time I'm going to cook the meatloaf on this side. I'm going to have the chips over indirect. So here's direct. Here's indirect. It depends upon your uh, barbecue, of course, but I think you can figure it out. So as long as this smoke is going, we're ready to go with the meat. What do you like to add to your meatloaf? Do you add cracker crumbs like some do? Or do you add breadcrumbs? 
or soggy bread and milk. Well, you can tell I don't do that one, but I do use a really nice aerated panko. Now this is a panko creme and we're gonna add it to one cup of milk or one cup of cream. Really, it's up to whatever's in your refrigerator. I'm gonna stir that up and we're adding an egg. The egg will go ahead and act as a binder. And the beauty of the egg in here is that it will help the meat adhere to the other little pieces of meat and peppers in there. One more flavor boost coming up. It's cowboy prairie fire. Hot and spicy. I love hot and spicy. And I'll tell you what, this is just the right amount of spiciness. It doesn't like put your tongue on fire or anything. So I have just a quarter cup. The barbecue sauce is the perfect way to infuse your meatloaf with a little more hickory flavor. Now, what if you don't happen to have cowboy prairie fire? Well, number one, I found out my hardware store. It was super easy. They had a bunch and they had all the flavors. Well, let's just say you got a few people shy of that hot and spicy, sweet and tangy. Just as good. I tried this out. Mm. It's almost drinkable, almost. So now we have nice moist panko crumbs and we're gonna go ahead and add it to our meat. Let's go ahead and change those gloves again because I'm gonna be touching the meat. I think this part is so fun and I got a really fun way of how you roll meatloaf. Gloves are on. Now I can just dig in with my hand but once again, I'm gonna give a couple scoops just to keep it aerated. So how do you make meatloaf? Do you just pound it into a, one of those uh, bread pans? That's how grandma, my grandma used to make it. Well, it was okay, but it was hard pressed. And think for a minute, if you put a bread pan onto here, sure, it'll bake, but will it get smoke at every angle? No. And we want cowboy hickory smoke to infuse it at every single angle. So what am I doing? I'm gonna roll it. But first, you put some Monterey Jack cheese. Monterey Jack cheese is a nice, mild, creamy cheese that will melt beautifully in meatloaf. The next step in this meatloaf is to add some diced chili. This is seven ounce, you know, the green chilies that come in the four ounce cans and the seven ounce. I chose seven ounces because I thought it would complement really well the cowboy bar barbecue sauce. Then it's time to roll it. Yes, roll it. We're not gonna hammer it into some pan. We're gonna roll it so it keeps that aeration. You know, like a jelly roll that you, um, it's the same motion actually. You just pull away each time. Always oh, so beautiful. So you're looking at this and you're going, that's huge. But I'll tell you what, it really only feeds eight people. And you might say, well, I only have two people or four people. Here's a trick. What you can do, you could cut it in half and you can go ahead and freeze half for later. But I'm also going to tell you the leftovers are really, really really good. So much so they didn't last long enough at my house and that's why I craved it as soon as I finished making it. Plus I always send my son and his friends home with food. You know, that's what grilling grandma does. I'm all about cleanup. So I went ahead and lined the sheet pan with foil. I'm not doing the dishes. Are you? Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and get a grill pan, put this right on top and watch. It's easier just to roll it on. So now let's see if we can do this step. Watch this, rolly. Just like you rolly in and out of bed. So I'm suggesting that you go ahead and put the foil on. That way it'll roll off that foil easier. Right now we're gonna shove this aside and grab the sauce. Now this isn't too hard of a sauce to make by any means because why? Because Cowboy did all the work. <sighs> Hot and spicy. Here you go, three quarters of cup of the barbecue sauce and three quarters cup ketchup. So even amount. Okay, let's check this out. Let's see if we can, what? Smell some hickory smoking wood chips. You betcha I can. Now here's a little trick. I'm gonna 
move this up above because that way it won't, you know, ignite on fire. I'm going to go ahead and put the meatloaf in the center of the grill. It's been about an hour, so we're going to go ahead and baste the final time. Oh, the meatloaf is looking so good. I'm going to finish up by adding a little more sauce. Then we're going to let it sit for at least 15, 20 minutes. It keeps its heat really well. And what I'm looking for on the thermometer is 160 degrees. It's looking delicious. And one thing you'll see, I added some golden potatoes. Last time I made this meatloaf, it took one hour for the meatloaf to finish and one hour for the potatoes to finish. So it was a perfect meal. I'm going to check. Let's see. Fingers crossed. 160. Whew. 160 it is. It's looking beautiful. Ooh, both sides, yum. Oh my goodness, I'm so tickled with how this turned out. It looks so beautiful. Don't you want to serve it at your next family event, neighborhood event? Hey, doesn't matter. Just serve it to whoever will show up at your table, right? So what we're going to do to finish up, we're going to go ahead and put on some oh, green onions. I love green onions on my potatoes. How about you? Then a little cilantro. Now listen, I heard a few of you say, but I can't eat cilantro. Well, that doesn't matter because you can do parsley instead. You could do arugula, anything just to make it pretty. We put on a little bed of kale. And then to finish it up, I think I will add just a little pepper. Thanks so much for joining me today, Grilling Grandma. It was so much fun to have you here. And as you can tell, I'm very excited about this. And today we have made the prairie fire meatloaf. It was smoked with hickory chips. It has a nice infusion of hickory within. We went ahead and added some golden Yukon potatoes right on the grill at the same time as smoking. Everything was done in an hour. Hallelujah. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to Cowboy Charcoal because you're going to find a lot of great recipes there, even some of mine. Until next week, keep cooking with Cowboy Charcoal.